Hi everyone, welcome to Simply Fun Cooking. I am Rachel Hansen, and today we are gonna make a really delicious, fresh dinner with some really great fresh flavors, perfect for this spring. So we're gonna start with a creamy chicken and asparagus dish. Um, we can serve that over rice. We're gonna make a delicious, bright, flavorful arugula salad with some goat cheese and some pears and cranberries and nuts. And then for dessert, we're gonna make a bananas faster sandwich. So we're gonna get started with our chicken. Um, I have four chicken breasts here that are thawed out and I'm just seasoning them with a little bit of salt and a little bit of paprika. Um, and on the stove top here, we have the rock crock heated up with just a tablespoon or two of oil in there. We're getting it nice and hot. We're actually just gonna sear up this chicken. We're not gonna cook it all the way through right now. Um, we're going to sear up this chicken and get both sides browned. Um, then we're gonna set it aside, work on our sauce. And actually what's really great about this recipe is it's gonna be super fast because we're going to start on the stove top, but then we're going to finish it in the microwave. So it's really quick, really easy, great recipe for getting dinner on the table fast on those busy weeknights. All right, so once you have some paprika and some salt on your chicken, and we've got some oil heated up in our pan, we're just gonna go ahead and put our chicken in the rock crock. You can hear the sizzle. All right, get that nestled in there. We'll give it just two or three minutes and then we're gonna flip them over and get the other side nice and browned. So, what I love about the rock crock is that we're going to be able to use this one pot for the entire meal. Remember I said it's gonna finish in the microwave? We're gonna be able to do that right in the rock crock because this, this pan can go straight from the stove top to the microwave. It can go in the oven, it can go into the broiler, it can go on the grill, it can do pretty much everything. So, right now, we're searing that chicken. So when we get our chicken totally seared on each side, we are gonna start working on our sauce. And for our sauce, we're going to need some garlic, some shallots, a little bit of chicken broth, and some cream cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use our manual food processor. We're just gonna go ahead and use the garlic peeler and we're gonna peel our garlic. And then we can put our peeled garlic right in the food processor. We're gonna add those shallots in and just chop everything up together. Get some shallots here. Now, just like every recipe that we make, you can control how much of these kinds of seasonings you add in, how much garlic, how many shallots. Some people like a little more, some people like a little less. I would recommend at least a whole shallot and at least two or three cloves of garlic. As always, I'm doing a little extra because that is how my family likes it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and flip our chicken here. You can see the first side is getting browned up. All right, once you have those shallots peeled and the garlic peeled, we're just gonna put that in the manual food processor and we're just gonna chop it up. All right, quick and easy to get the shallots and the garlic all chopped up. All right, let's check on our chicken, see if the other sides are browned up. I'm gonna give it just another moment here, I think. All right, so when that chicken is done, we're just gonna set it aside in a bowl until we have the sauce ready, and then we'll put it back in before we put everything into the microwave to finish cooking. So while we're waiting for that, we're gonna get our asparagus ready. We need about a half of a pound of asparagus. So I need about half of my package here. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you trim the ends and then Cut them into about one inch chunks. So of course, the super easy way to trim those ends is just to kind of line them up and just snap them. Did you know when you do that, the asparagus will actually snap 
right at the end of that woody part. Takes all the guesswork out of it. So we're just going to cut it into, like I said, about one inch chunks here. And that will be all ready to add into our sauce. All right, let's set our chicken aside. I'm going to take our chicken chunks out. You can see they're browned up, lightly seasoned, and they're brown. They're not cooked all the way through. You can see some raw spots on some of them, and that's okay because it's going to finish cooking later. For our sauce, we are going to add in a little bit more oil. We had a tablespoon or two in there to begin with. Um, when we were browning up the chicken, but we're adding in a little bit more. And then we're going to add in those shallots and garlic that we just chopped up. Now what we're making today, this is what we call a pan sauce. And what that means is we're making the sauce right in the pan. But what's really unique about these pan sauces and what makes them really special and really flavorful is that when we cook that chicken and we brown the chicken, there are little pieces of chicken that stuck to the pan. You, know, you always have that when you sear up meat like that. But I didn't pull those pieces out. I leave them in. And we're actually going to kind of scrape them off the bottom as we're cooking up our veggies and making our sauce. And those little bits of meat, whether it's chicken or beef or pork or whatever you're making, it's those little pieces left behind from steering that give your sauce a really robust flavor. So that is the trick to your pan sauces. So I'm just going to take my spoon here and of course the rock crack, we can use metal utensils. So I can use the spoon to gently get some of those bits off the bottom. After you've kind of sauteed up the shallots and the garlic a little bit. You can see those shallots starting to soften. You've got some nice color from your, from those little bits that you've scooped up from the bottom. All right, we're gonna continue our sauce with some broth. We only need half of a cup of chicken broth. Let's put that in there. Start mixing it around. And then we need a block of cream cheese. So. I have some that's been softening overnight, so it's ready to go, nice and melty. And we're going to put that in, and we're going to go ahead and melt that and make our sauce nice and creamy. And we're going to add in a little more salt. All right. So now. We're just going to give this a couple minutes while that cream cheese melts slowly. It's going to kind of break it up a little bit with my spoon as we go here. You could also cut it into chunks before you put it into the, the pan, but this is so easy. Why bother? All right, we're going to let that keep. We're going to let that keep melting, get all that cream cheese melted. Uh, we'll get everything mixed together. We're going to get some um, lemon sliced. So on this dish, once our sauce is ready, what we're going to do is we're going to add our chicken back in. We're going to kind of nestle it in there with the asparagus, and we're going to put some fresh lemon slices on top. And then we'll cover that. We'll put it in the microwave for eight minutes, and then it'll be done and ready to go. So let's get our slices all ready here. Now the lemon with that chicken and the asparagus is going to give it some really nice bright flavors. That'll help pull it all together. All right, we've got our cream cheese all melted. We've got a nice thick sauce here. And we're going to get our chicken put back in there, but first we're going to season it up a little bit more. We're going to add some more of that paprika and mix that in. Just give it some real nice color, real great flavor. So we're going to mix this in. What we're going to do is we're going to take our chicken and we're going to put our chicken back in and nestle it all down into a single layer. Kind of press it into our sauce a little bit here. 
We've got a little bit of chicken broth at the bottom of my bowl here. We definitely don't want to miss out on that, so I'm going to pour that over as well. That's got some good seasoning and flavor in there. We don't want to miss out on it. All right, so now we're going to take our asparagus, and we're going to take our asparagus, and we're going to put that over, and I'm going to kind of press that down into the sauce in just a moment here. And after I've kind of mixed this around a little bit, we'll throw those lemon slices right on top. Just spread this around a little bit here. All right, we'll take that fresh lemon and we'll just lay those slices right on top of here. Just like this. Let's get one more in there. All right, so we're going to take this off the heat. And right now, all we need to do is we can cover this and then we're going to put this in the microwave, like I said, for about eight to 10 minutes and then it'll be all good to go. Now we're going to serve this over rice. We've got that beautiful thick sauce and it's going to be great on that chicken, but we want to use up that sauce. So I actually have some, just some regular basmati white rice ready to go. Um, made it in the quick cooker and it's just sitting and warming. So it'll be nice and warm and ready to serve with our dish. Now, while this is cooking in the microwave, we're going to go ahead and get our arugula salad ready. For this salad, this is so easy. Friends, Salads are one of those things that you can make in so many different ways with so many different ingredients. It can taste different every time, but salads are so good for you. So we're starting out, I've got some fresh greens. We've got spinach and arugula. It's washed, it's spun dry. And we're gonna put some really fresh flavors on there. So we're gonna start out with some pears here. And I'm just gonna dice up some pear. And we're gonna put some goat cheese and some walnuts and some dried cranberries on there. Really, really super simple. And then we're gonna make a really quick and easy dressing with some balsamic and some olive oil. So I'm just kind of chopping these up. I'm just gonna dice them real quick. And nice thing about pears, pears are super sweet, um, but they're soft enough. Like this is a job that you could have your kids do. You can give them um, even just like a plastic cheese knife. Usually you can cut up pears and put them to work in the kitchen. You know how much I love putting my kids to work in the kitchen. All right. So get this all diced up here. And we're just going to pop this on top. We'll get everything all tossed in just a moment here. All right, so there we've got a pear and we're gonna add in some dried cranberries. Dried cranberries always give salads a nice flavor, a little bit of texture, all right? And some walnut pieces. Now you can get whole walnuts and you can chop them up I've got some pieces all ready to go right here. Okay, so we're just gonna sprinkle some of those in here. And then we're gonna make some quick and easy dressing and we're gonna put some cheese in there. So for our dressing, we are going to use, I love going to the oilery here in Sun Prairie. They have some amazing flavors. So we have their roasted walnut oil and their apple balsamic today. So we're gonna use those and we're gonna make a quick dressing out of that. Now, you wanna use about, I usually use about two to three parts of oil and then about one part of the balsamic. So um, this is one of those things you can eyeball, you can measure if you'd like, but I'm gonna put some oil in there. We're gonna add some balsamic in there. Making your own dressing is quick, it's easy, it's fresh, you know exactly what's in there, so it's super healthy, you can get exactly the flavor you want. So a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then we're just gonna whisk this together. Okay, 
So quick and easy dressing. All right, and then we're gonna get some goat cheese. So we're gonna take some goat cheese here. And we're gonna just kind of chunk it up. Goat cheese will kind of crumble on its own as you try to chop it up, which is perfect. So I just kind of roughly chop it up and then we take those chunks and just kind of put them in. And it'll break up some more as we mix our salad. So there's our goat cheese. Now, like I said, salads are something that you can make in so many different ways. If you're not a fan of goat cheese, try feta or gorgonzola or blue cheese. So many different options. And you can play with your salad dressing, mix up the flavors with the different oils and different balsamics. All right. But we're going to take some of our dressing here and we're just going to kind of drizzle it on top, just like that. And then all we need to do take our servers and just give it a nice toss. Now this salad is going to go so well with our chicken because we've got that creaminess of that goat cheese in here and that's going to go really well with that creaminess that we have in the asparagus and the sauce. But it's not going to be too much either. Both are nice light dishes. So there we have it. Our arugula salad is all ready to go. Now before we put everything together, I'm going to show you how to make a really quick and easy, tasty dessert. For dessert, we are going to make this ooey, gooey, creamy, delicious Bananas Foster sandwich. Bananas Foster is a, one of those dishes that we all love but we never think about making because it seems like it'd be tricky, right? But this sandwich is so easy. So we're gonna use our new Deluxe Electric Grill and Griddle. Um, I have it heated up on the custom setting to 350 degrees. We've got it set for three minutes. It's all preheated, ready to go. Um, we just have our, our griddle plates in there. So we're going to make our filling for our sandwiches first. And what we're gonna do is in a bowl, we're just gonna take two tablespoons of brown sugar and then we need four teaspoons and of course on our measure all cup we can measure teaspoons right on here we need four teaspoons of a caramel sauce it can be whatever kind you have on hand so we're going to add that in i know we're all preheated my griddle is telling me all right and then we need half of a teaspoon of our cinnamon. So we're gonna get half a teaspoon of cinnamon in there. And we're gonna go ahead and mix this together. Now we're gonna slice up a couple of bananas and we're gonna put them in this bowl and just kind of get them covered in some of this sauce. So a couple ripe bananas here, and we're going to cut them on a bias, meaning we're gonna cut them at an angle. Gives them a little more surface area. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of give them a quick chop here. Okay, so we've got these nice angled slices of banana, and we're gonna put those into our bowl with that sauce. All right. Once you have your bananas in there, we're just gonna give it a gentle mix here to get some of that brown sugar and caramel and cinnamon on all of our banana slices. 
Now that th sauce looked a little bit thick when we first put it in there, um, but when you have a little bit of moisture from those bananas, it'll help thin it out a little bit. And you can see that with just a little bit of mixing, it coats them really quite nicely. So then you're gonna wanna take some nice French brioche bread, okay? Now you can use whatever kind of bread you have on hand if you don't have brioche, but some brioche will be really good for this dish. And we're gonna take our pieces of bread here, and on one side, we're just gonna line up some of our banana slices. So I'm just gonna put a layer of our bananas down. Make sure to get some of that nice sauce in there that we just made. In fact, I might scoop a little extra on here. All right. Now, on top of here, we are going to add some marshmallows. All right. You can put them on whole if you'd like. You can slice them in half if you want a little less marshmallow. I'm going to slice it in half here for mine. So I just had three large marshmallows here. You could also use mini marshmallows. And then we're going to add some walnuts on top here. So we've got some of those walnut pieces that we had for our salad. And we're going to put those in. Sprinkle some in there. All right, and then we just put our other piece of bread on top. Now, we're gonna go ahead and open up our griddle here. We're going to use this in the closed position today. So it's going to toast both sides of our sandwich at once, and it's going to squish it together and make it all melty. So we're gonna go ahead and put it right in here like this. I'm gonna close it up, and I'm gonna press the start button. So I don't need to flip it because both grates um, are heated independently. So we can just kind of keep it closed and let it go. And when it's done, we're just going to put it on a plate. We're going to cut it in half. Uh, we're going to cut it in half at an angle, make it look really pretty. If you want, you can top it with some ice cream, a little sprinkle of cinnamon, some more of that caramel sauce. So when it's done, we'll get this all plated up and we'll show you how it looks. Three minutes is up. Oh my gosh, look at this. We have got melty marshmallow. My goodness. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this off here. We've got marshmallow explosion here. All right. I think the kids are going to love this. Now we have these marshmallows that escaped. This is easy enough to just kind of put them back in. I think I'm just going to kind of sneak them right back in here just like this. There we go. All right, so then we've got our delicious bananas foster. Oh my gosh, you guys, it smells so good. That cinnamon in there. I'm just going to cut that in half so you can see. Now you'll notice I didn't add any butter or oil, nothing on this bread. So you don't even have those extra, those extra things to worry about. But look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? Now we're going to make this even better, right? the little extra of that caramel sauce. So we're just gonna drizzle a little bit extra on top just like this. And then maybe just another little sprinkle of that cinnamon for a little extra touch. All right, so there we go. This is dessert for tonight, our really, really simple banana foster sandwiches. All right, our dinner is ready, our dessert is ready. Let's pull it all together and take a look at this delicious meal. Our chicken is done. Guys, so easy. This is such an easy recipe. All right, so we are gonna get all dished up ready for dinner. We're gonna get some of this amazing arugula salad with the arugula and the spinach. And we've got the crunch of some walnuts in there, the sweetness of the pear, the creaminess of the goat cheese, the texture of those cranberries. And then of course, those robust flavors from the walnut flavored olive oil and the apple balsamic really pulls it together. So we've got that going here. We've got our rice that has been sitting here, staying warm. We're gonna get some of our rice on our plate here. 
And that is going to be the base for our chicken. So check this out. Look at that steamy, amazing chicken. Oh, it smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. All right, we're gonna just take some of our chicken here, get some of that sauce, some of that asparagus, and we're gonna put that right over our rice. All right, and then, of course, we have our bananas foster sandwiches for dessert. What a great meal, and we've got all sorts of fresh, healthy ingredients in here. All three of these recipes were so quick and easy to make. Love the versatility of being able to use this rock crock on the stovetop and then just putting it right in the microwave to finish up. I mean, that chicken finished cooking all by itself while we made this salad and dessert. They're all so easy. Three minutes is all it took for this banana foster sandwich. So when you are looking for some fresh new ideas, get some of those great spring veggies out, try something a little bit different for dessert. These are some really great recipes for you and your family to enjoy. So I wanna thank you guys for joining me today. Um, and if you want these recipes, you want more info about any of the products we use today, head on over to pamperedchef.com. You can search for me. Rachel Hansen, or your local Pampered Chef Consultant. We'll see you next time.